It's the NFL on EA Sports. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Niners and the Packers. All that and more coming up next. We are at the oldest continually operating stadium in the NFL as you get a look inside Lambeau Field in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Brandon Gaunt and Charles Davis on hand. Kickoff just moments away. Charles quickly, keys to the game. For me, it's coaching. Who prepared his team the best going into this one to give them the confidence to believe that they would win the game? That's who's going to come out of this one on top. Now the kicker, Brandon McManus, about ready to get us started. And off we go from Lambeau. And he'll go down as this drive will start at the 25-yard line. Well, the 49ers get ready to go on offense, and it's the Pro Bowler Brock Purdy at the helm in his third NFL season now out of Iowa State. And the great story of Brock Purdy continues. Had he been drafted in the first round, I think people would be singing his praises to the skies, but for whatever reason, people can't let go of the fact he's Mr. Irrelevant and they don't give him the credit he deserves. He is not just a system quarterback. He's a guy who enhances his team. Not just along for the ride, he's the one steering the ship. And without him, their ceiling significantly drops. Starting the drive with Mason on the ground. And a good physical run that time. He's going to wind up gaining five on that one. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent game. Ball on the 30. They'll come up with a second and five. On the ground again, it's Mason. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. 18 yards, first down Niners. Good sign here early. Everybody on offense there up front in the backfield in sync on that play. So much talk about what do you do to neutralize home field advantage? Well, teams that run the football effectively, they often have a way of neutralizing it in a big way when they have those types of runs. That flag accepted, and it backs the offense up a little bit. Still first down. Now they need 15 yards on this series after the delay of game. First and 15. Purdy. A dump off for Mason. And he'll be brought down, losing yardage back at the 40. The completion, but they go in the wrong direction. A loss of yards, and now they're dealing with a second and long. Really good defensive effort. They were all over that little swing pass out to the right side before lost yardage. Terrific read, better execution, and done with a lot of enthusiasm, wasn't it? Absolutely. They saw it all the way, ran to the football, and caused a nice play for lost yardage. That's into the hands of the rookie from Florida. The result, only four yards there on the play. And they're going to be staring at a third and long here. Oh, it's time to give a little credit there to the defense. They played that very well because it was a drag route. And he ran a little shallower than normal as he worked straight across the field. He was hoping he'd get lost behind the defensive line. But once he made the catch, nowhere to turn up field and gain any yardage. Over the middle, complete to Samuel. And he's going to come up a few yards short. Brought down at the 45. They'll get 11, but it'll still lead to a fourth down. And I believe that that gain on third and long changes things quite a bit because this would be a very long field goal. I wouldn't be surprised to see him go for it here. So on fourth down, here's the Australian native Mitch Wisnowski to punt this one away. So the Packers make their way out for the first time, and it's Jordan Love that has the keys to the car here in his fifth season as a pro and second as a starter. 
and Love established himself as a legitimate franchise quarterback a season ago. And let's not forget, he had to exhibit a lot of patience waiting for his opportunity to become the man. And once he got that chance, he hit the ground running. The question now from the rest of the league, can he sustain that success? The Packers certainly believe he will. Love going to break the huddle, lead the Packers up here first and 10 at the 20. They'll try and start this drive in the air. He has it complete to Christian Watson. And he'll be stopped at his tracks right at the 33. Give him 13 yards on the opening play of the drive and also give him a first down. But it appears that they read man defense and went to the out route. And what you have to do on that one is the receiver's got to make sure he works the defender towards the middle of the field to give himself space to cut to the outside and have that ball delivered with good timing. And they got it done. First carry for Josh Jacobs to about the 35, second down. Oh, that's a real nice job there by the defensive front. They just engaged and held their ground. But how about the guy who made the play? We often talk about whether they take a good first step or not. Many times, you just don't take any step. Just get your feet moving, get your body going. And then once he made the read, he was able to make the play. Love. And that one is incomplete. And it also concludes quarter number one. No score after one on EA Sports. Back for the second quarter in Green Bay. It's the Packers in possession of the football as they've got it with a third down coming up. They'll be in search of eight yards here as they hope to convert the first down. Throwing. Love. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he's going to have a Packers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. What an intelligent play as he found open grass and uncovered quickly. A nice clutch play to move the chains. The defense, they've got to do a much better job of accounting for these shorter routes. Two first downs have him up near midfield now on first and ten. Play action this time with Love. Pass caught. It's Romeo Dobbs. And they're able to work this to the 25 before it's all said and done. A good pick up there. 26 yards. Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. Able to find his man, Kraft. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. And forget about the run to set up the pass. They're just coming out throwing. Forget trying to set anything up. They feel like they have the advantage. They feel like they have the matchups, and they're just attacking right now. Yep, going to the air on the opening drive. Now a give to Jacobs running right. And he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. Four yards the pick up, first down. And Brandon, you know that expression? He just does what he does. <laughs> it sounds trite, doesn't it? But in this case, it's perfectly apt. This is one of the better runners in the NFL. And all he does is just find avenues, find ways to pick up key first downs and big runs. His pass caught at the four. And the Packers are going to have a first and goal coming up as the tackle made at the three-yard line. But one of the ways the quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field, and here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. Second quarter, two minutes to go. Tie ball game. First and goal from the three. Jacobs fighting, but he won't get too far. Maybe a yard, that's all, down to the two. Only a yard that time, second and goal. Good work there, holding him out on first down, and this is going to be a battle down here on the goal line. Can they hold their ground for two, maybe even three more plays? From the two now, second and goal. Now Love. Escaping the... 
And he will get this into the end zone. Touchdown, Green Bay. Jordan Love taking it in from two yards out. And the Packers post the first points of the ball game as they take the lead here in this second quarter. Well, I'd have to say that for him, that was an all-encompassing drive because it was his arm that got his team down to that point, but his legs that finished the deal. Give him credit for making it happen. On here, Brandon McManus for the point after. And it's good to make it 7-0 Packers. A 10-play drive that time. And it's culminated by a two-yard touchdown run. After the touchdown, here's McManus now to kick it away. Well, now how about this return? And they'll have very good starting field position as he's up just shy of the 40. Back out there comes the 49ers offense ready for their second drive. They'll be looking to match that touchdown from a moment ago. 7-0 is the score as they begin with a first down. Purdy will set up to throw it here. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. This team is not going to make it easy for you. They're a physical group, and we just saw it there on that play. He came in, made the contact, just as he's trying to haul it in. Now a second and ten. Now Purdy. The first catch of the game for George Kittle. The 49ers now going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. Purdy now to throw. He's got Mason complete. Two yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. Back to throw, Purdy. He finds his man, complete. It's Mason. And he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. A gain there of 21 yards. A lot of times the key is just get him the ball and let him do his thing, and they got it out to him on the left side, and he did exactly that. Excellent run after the catch. Throwing here, Purdy. Over the middle, complete. That's Jennings. Down he goes at the 23, a pickup of four. Second and six. Once more, Purdy looking to throw. Connects with Kittle underneath. Now San Francisco going to call their second timeout as it'll come with 15 seconds to play in the first half.
So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. Out of the gun, Purdy. And a dangerous throw there, incomplete. He threw that into coverage. It was nearly intercepted. They're putting together a drive here in the final minutes of the half. But the coverage has been tight all game long, and they certainly want to keep them up the scoreboard here. Here's second and ten. Purdy will look to throw again here. That is caught inside the five. Now a signal and a timeout call as it comes with nine seconds to go in this first half of play. A chance now to get even before the break as they come up first and goal. Here's Purdy. And he'll just get rid of it. I'm really liking what I'm seeing from this defense because their coverage has been playing at a shutdown level so far. Even backed up late. They're forcing incompletions and fighting to keep them out of the end zone as the first half winds down. So on second down, the field goal unit is on here as they try to get three before half. And this one is right through. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's seven to three. Well, still trailing here, but they do get the late field goal. Now their defense will try to keep this score right where it is heading into the locker room. Yeah, and trailing it to break, you obviously don't want to go in off of a negative play. Give them credit for that one. Finding a way to put points on the board. Give them any type of a spark, anything to build off of as they try and plan a comeback. So with three seconds remaining in the half, they will line up to kick this one away. And that'll be a little too hot to handle as it will skip through the end zone for a touchback here. All that remains is to snap this once, and that'll do it for the first half of play. So we've reached intermission here in a low-scoring game. 7-3 is our score. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach! It was the Packers' leading man, quarterback Jordan Love, who turned in a solid performance in that first half. He's got the lone touchdown of the game on a touchdown run. We'll see if he can get it going through the air as this one goes on. Okay, Coach, yeah, adjustments likely going to play a big role in this third quarter in what's been a tight contest so far. So it's the Packers set to receive the kick. They've got the lead as well as we are underway in the third quarter. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. Here's the Packers offense now getting set to start off this third quarter. Now this game, it has obviously been all about the defense on both sides of the football. Which offense is going to break through here? We'll see if they can do it on this drive. Love and the Packers now with a first and 10 at their own 27. Completed out left to Dobbs. Call it a gain of a yard, and that'll make it second down. The goal of a wide receiver screen is get enough blockers in front to create a wall and let him pick his spot to run the football. How about the defense there swarming to it and not allowing that to happen? Did not let him get downfield. Ball on the 28-yard line. Here's a second down and nine. Here's Love. Now this aired out deep for Reed. And that's caught inside the 35. Touchdown, Packers. Jaden Reed 
72 yards. And the Packers come right out of the locker room and score here in the opening minute of the third quarter. And he showcased his blazing speed on that one. Was he wearing football cleats or track spikes? <laughs> because he was gone. Big time play. And just think about what that does if you're a receiver on the team with him. Well, that's got to open things up for you as well because if I'm a defense, I've got to get back deeper and deeper in order to keep him in front. But I'm not sure how many can actually keep him in front with that speed. Extra point from McManus is good. And that pushes the lead up to 11. The long touchdown pass gets him six on a very, very tidy two-play drive that time. After the touchdown, here's McManus now to kick it away. And they will wrangle him down a couple yards shy of the 30. Here's a look at the 49ers offense as they make their way out for their first possession of the second half. And their deficit a little wider than it was at halftime. Does that touchdown a minute ago change the thinking here at all? I think it does, at least a little bit, because now urgency has to start setting in. You can't go out there and go three and out and run the risk of falling behind substantially, but you have to do it without pressing, because pressing, that'll lead you into bigger errors. That's into the hands of Pearsall on the right side. And he's going to be down at the 35, gain of seven. And his play caller does a nice job of giving him an easy throw to start this drive, and he takes advantage of it. The completion sets up a manageable second down. From the 35, here's second and three. Purdy from the gun. He finds his man complete. That's Mason. And he'll go out of bounds, it looks like, right at the 40. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. But they certainly had success throughout this contest, getting him the ball in the passing game, and there he picks up another first down. Whatever they saw going into this one, they've been able to capitalize on it, and no adjustment has been made to take it away. So they accept the penalty, of course, and push the offense backwards a bit. Still first down. The delay of game backs him up five, first and 15. Samuel in motion. Purdy looking to throw. That's to the right side, complete to Kittle. Call it a gain of 12, but of course not a first down due to the previous penalty. A nice chunk play from the tight end position, and it illustrates the cohesiveness that he and his quarterback have. Both saw the extra defender doubling him up, and it's still combined for the completion and big gain. Ball on the 47-yard line. Here's second down and three. Now they run. It's Mason. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. It'll be a loss of a yard, and that's going to lead to a third and four coming up. This defense is just flat getting after it. They have not given up much of anything in the run game. Case in point right there. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. That is caught. Room to maneuver at the 35. And he'll be taken down at the 26. A big play that time on the catch and run. And it's going to yield a new set of downs. Now what we're seeing, this is much better from this offense because so far in this game, no touchdown to this point. And what's usually a direct correlation? Very few explosive plays. That's been their issue. Not able to make that big shot downfield or break one off, but a nice game there for a first down.
Now the offense knew it. They were already starting to walk back as that one is accepted. Still first down. So a little bit of a stiffer challenge now. First and 15 following the delay of game. Now Mason. And they'll bring him down at the 18-yard line. 13 yards on the pickup, and it'll be a second down. That was huge after being behind the chains on first down to make this second very manageable. Yeah, how much pride do you have in an offense on first down to get that kind of yardage? Because it actually opens up your playbook on second down. You can run it, you can throw it, you keep a defense off balance. I like that phrase, stand ahead of the chains, and they're doing exactly that. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. It'll be first and goal when we come back. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now at Lambeau. It's 49er football, but some ground to cover. They find themselves behind as we hit the fourth and final quarter. Play action. Now Purdy. Now he's got it. And he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. That'll bring up second and goal after the gain of five. I know it was a gain, but you have to sense probably a little bit of disappointment there because when it's out there in open space, I think they expect to get more out of a play, don't you? Especially when you're getting it to your guy out of the backfield. You're expecting him to be able to create something, be a little more shifty. Yeah, no doubt about it. Good open field tackling held him to an okay. And he's going to be dropped back in the 15-yard line. With Sean Gary that time fighting free and getting to the quarterback. I remember throughout my career here in defensive coaches, I always say, guys, you got to earn the right to rush the passer. Well, they put themselves in a great spot with this big lead and they know they've got to throw the ball. These pass rushers have to be salivating. It is pin your ears back time indeed. A lot of tired bodies on that field, but this is a big play, third and goal. Purdy. And the pressure gets to him again. Devontae Wyatt. He's the one to get him this time. And back-to-back -back sacks brings up fourth down. And it appears to me that someone's defensive coordinator is jockeying for a raise. A sack on second and goal. A sack on third and goal. Now brings up a decision on fourth down. Purdy, big fourth down play. And he hauls it in, in the end zone. Touchdown, San Francisco. Ricky Pearsall from 21 yards away. And the Niners have made it a one-score game again here in the fourth. So how about that for an answer? They get the touchdown there, and it's back to a one-score game here in the fourth. And that's what these guys have done all game long because they've scratched and slashed their way to stay in this game. And by now, we should all realize they're not going away. Now the pressure again swings to their defense because they're going to need to find some way to get the ball back. And this is caught. They got it. And that could be an important two points. It gets him back within a field goal. Well, I guess the coach looked at the two-point cheat sheet, said go for it, get it to a three-point game, and they did it. Yeah, and sometimes you just throw out time of game. You don't worry about that. There's just a feel sometimes in making that call. And he felt good about what he had for a two-point conversion. And now they're only down three and feeling great about themselves. So after the made field goal by Moody, he's back out to kick this one away. And he takes this near the 25, just a little pass there, call it the 26. 
The Green Bay offense ready to take over. I don't want to say that they're completely against the wall here, Charles, but all of a sudden, with the run that they've been on on the other sideline, this is down to a three-point game. they got to be careful. Not much space from their back to the wall, though. So True. you're exactly right. They've got to be careful here. But this is where the value of note-taking and recall comes into play. What was working earlier? Why was it working? Can you get those types of matchups again? And can you run those plays that get you a little bit more breathing room and a little bit of space? And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. Malik Collins breaking through to get him to the ground. It's a loss of seven. And no matter what the situation, the O-line just hates that because they feel like they didn't protect little brother back there, right? Yeah, and that's just so difficult for them because just think about every single play. When you decide to throw the football, you're dealing with some of the best athletes on the planet. You talk about guys, if they weren't playing football, they'd be starring in the NBA at power forward. It's a really difficult task. Play fake. Here's Love. A hit as he throws there, incomplete. This a very important drive, and that incompletion leads to a very important third down here if they're going to try and get the football back. Yeah, getting it back, absolutely crucial to their chances to try and win this game. I would expect a lot of pressure here. They can't afford to let them continue to get first downs and eat away at the clock. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And a good job defensively. They stop him short of the first at the 32. Three points separating these two sides with two minutes left to go in the fourth. So it's Packer football here as we welcome you back. They're looking at a fourth down now as they try to hold on to this lead for dear life. On now is the Packers punter as he's on to punt for the first time this afternoon. Well, on that punt, we've got a man shaken up. While they come out and take a look at him, we will step aside for just a moment. Here's first and ten. Purdy to throw. Finding Samuel. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. And here we are in the fourth quarter, partner, and watch him drive for what would be a go-ahead touchdown. And you and I both know, this is where you need a quarterback who can keep his cool back there. Not just for himself, but to keep the rest of the team relaxed, too. Plenty of time. All three timeouts still remain. Here's first and ten now. Pass complete, Samuel. The 49ers now going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. Here's Purdy. This secondary as a unit, they worked really well together in this one, especially late. A lot of cohesiveness, a lot of communication, and some great athleticism. They're playing so well now, a nickname is sure to follow. They're going to have to name this whole unit soon. Well, this crowd trying to force a false start here. Third and inches. Purdy to throw. Oh, they would have gotten the conversion if he could hold on. Instead, the drop means it'll be fourth down. With that incompletion, reality is staring them right in the face. This entire game is down to the next snap. Here it is. Fourth and inches. They'll run for it with Mason. 
And he's taken down at the 43, but not before picking up the first. Now you're right on the edge of field goal range. You've still got time, but get up to the line of scrimmage and get set. Two timeouts still available in this final minute. It's first and ten now. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. Under 50 seconds to play. Here's second and 10. To throw is Purdy. Over the middle, complete to Samuel. Now San Francisco going to call their second timeout as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the game. Boy, just a gigantic play here, both sides. This is third and inches. Throwing, Purdy. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he'll be out of bounds as he gets it down to the 30 there. Well, they got the yardage they needed there. Picked up the first down, got out of bounds. How about the urgency that they had, as well as the understand where they are in the field. Final minute, one timeout remaining. First and ten. They'll run here with Mason. Looking for a seam, but finding none. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. Nice job there defensively to clamp down, because really, they've been on their heels this drive. Agreed, and they really needed that one for confidence, just to feel a little bit better. But I don't know if I would be daunted by them stopping me on one run. This drive has gone pretty well. I could come right back at them. Open man is Samuel, complete. And a timeout coming in. This will be their final one with 10 seconds remaining. So here we go. It's Jake Moody now in a big spot. Now a final chance to stop it here as a timeout comes in with 10 seconds left in the game. So here we go. Maybe the biggest kick of the game forthcoming. This to potentially send us to overtime. And his kick is right there. It's good. And they will tie this game here in the final seconds. So a money kick there in the final seconds. And now, barring any hijinks on the kickoff here, partner, I think you and I, we're going to settle in for a little overtime. And I wouldn't have it any other way. This has been a dogfight all through regulation. No reason to think it won't continue in the extra period. So overtime on the horizon, barring a wild finish here as the kick's away. And they'll let that one go as it skips through the back of the end zone for a touchback. This is first and ten. Now Love. He's going to launch this deep for Watson. And a penalty flag comes in as that one winds up incomplete. But the contact is going to move the ball well downfield. So the game will continue for at least one more play. Could not finish a game on a defensive penalty. That's why they get one more untimed attempt. And it is. 
is good. He splits the uprights on the chip shot. And there'll be some happy cheese heads tonight as the Packers have won the game. Well, you really can't ask for much more than what we just had here. Not only a close game that went down to the wire, Charles, but a clean one, too. No turnovers in this contest. And I think you're exactly right about that. To me, this is just a pair of offenses trying to find the slightest bit of separation from each other. And they were both hoping that the other side would make the big mistake first. But today, neither side made that mistake. And what we got, a very entertaining game throughout. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn. And this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. The Packers are winners here as we say so long from Lambeau.